addition to being a mom and an agent, I have to learn all these crazy terms like Ashley and I were talking about before. Designated dual agency, dual agency. Talk about diapers. <laughs> Lots of D words. <laughs> Lots of D words. So we're going to try to keep it really simple. There are two kinds of dual agency. There's one where you have two agents within one firm. One works for the buyer and one works for the seller. Mm -hmm. The other type is where one agent works for both the buyer and the seller. Currently, Ashley and I are in a transaction on Naomi Street where Ashley works for the seller and I work for the buyer. In this situation, even though she and I work for the same brokerage, or not work for, but are employed by, same we firm. are yep. employed by the same firm, we are reporting to our individual clients. When she and I discuss the transaction, we are negotiating on the behalf of our clients. We are not working with each other. Uh, so hopefully that clears up some confusion. Now assuming that I were representing both the buyer and the seller, I would become neutral. I wouldn't be able to advocate for either. Got it, yeah. Okay. Because so, you can't be, really. You can't be, but you also and you can't be telling anyone else's secrets. You're Fort Knox. Yeah, You're on you lockdown are, and that's our agency. fiduciary duty, and fiduciary yeah. is another word for another day. But thank you so much, Cleo, for um, thank, and thank you, Caroline, for explaining, trying to explain designated dual agency. We certainly hope that if you have questions, you will call. Tell us your number. 860-368-9728. Don't be scared by the Connecticut area code. I've been in North Carolina for two and a half years, and I plan to stay until this little one is grown. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks.